Hi, this is Will again, and this is our second video in our series about healing your relationship with God, with the divine. And again, when I say God, I mean the God of your understanding. This is not about someone's specific idea of what the divine is. And I do use the term God on purpose because for many of my friends who are healers and coaches and therapists, when I use the term God, it brings up just enough stuff to help them to realize or to see that their relationship with the divine is not as squeaky clean as they might like. And again, from the first video, that's what I shared part of my journey with this as I started with that spiritual group uh, leading prayers that I could say divine consciousness, love, universe, but I couldn't say God and I couldn't say Jesus or Lord or Savior, which are just other names for the divine. And so that was the, my first indication that I had some big healing to do in my relationship with all that is. So the first video we talked about identifying specific religious baggage. And again, religious baggage doesn't mean that you had to have grown up in a church or grown up going to temple or the mosque. Uh, it could just be that through your life experiences with authority figures or specific examples or books you read or movies that you watched, that you started to pile up some religious baggage that you put in the backpack that you've been carrying ever since. And I want to continue that analogy, and this is one that I share with clients all the time. Imagine that you're at the beginning of a race, and the race is any goal that you're looking at. If you're a healer or coach or therapist and you want to grow your practice, or if you are a spiritual practitioner and you want a deeper relationship with the divine, whatever the goal is, imagine that you're at the start line, and the gun goes off and everyone starts running together. And for the first two steps, you are keeping pace with everybody. But pretty quickly, you start to realize that you're running different races because they're all shooting ahead. And you can't seem to make progress. And you're getting really tired. And you don't know why. And you look to the sidelines and your coach or your friend or your mentor is saying, you know, just, just be positive. Just focus on what you want. Set your goals. Keep on going. You can do this. Stay positive. Set your goals. Focus on what you want try a new strategy, and you're doing all those things, and you're running, 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 but quickly you see that everyone else is just having a much easier time of this, and you're exhausted. And then you hear this other little voice coming from the sidelines that says, check your backpack. And you go, what backpack? I'm not, I don't have a backpack. I'm not wearing a backpack. What's that person talking about? So you keep on focusing on the end result. You know what you want. You can see it clearly. You visualize. You're doing the work. You're getting the coaching. You're go, 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 go. But you're exhausted and everyone else is now they're starting to lap you and you're exhausted and you don't know why. And you hear the voice again that says, check your backpack. And so out of frustration, you look behind to, to prove the point. You look behind and say, I'm not wearing what the? And then you see that you've got a backpack on and you check it. And as you look inside the backpack, you see these giant boulders and each giant rock is another piece of, rel of religious baggage. Those specific life experiences that were either that seemed small at the time or maybe seemed big at the time that have been weighing you down for months or years or maybe decades. And I wish you could hear what I can hear right now. I, I hear the wind and the, the leaves and the trees outside and the rain that's falling. It's a rainy, dreary day, perfect for contemplation and introspection. And that bit of wind that just picked up, it just had perfect timing as, as there's that moment of silence in the video. So I hope you can find a moment of silence for yourself as well. If it's time for you to let go of some of that baggage, some of those rocks in your backpack, then I'm really, really glad that you're here. And again, I, I don't have a script for all this. I have a few talking points, but this is just me and you having a conversation about God through the miracle of video and computers and all that jazz. I'm really glad that you're here. And for some of you, this has been a very long time coming, and you are also really glad that you're here. And thank you for being here. Okay. Okay. So now, so you've identified that religious baggage, and if you did the kind of homework from the first video, then now you've identified some of the specific ones. So now, how are you going to shift that? How are you going to release that? Well, I'm going to get into even more in the free call that I have coming up, and I want to give you some specific things right now. So the first one is you have to recontextualize. 
And I'm going to share a story in a minute about how I did that many, many years ago. The second is, uh, and I'm just looking at my notes here, you have to identify which of these don't, oh, sorry, I haven't explained my twitches yet. I'll explain that twitch in just a moment. You have to identify which of those uh, pieces of baggage, which of those boulders don't even belong to you, that you pick them up energetically from someone else and you've been trying to heal it or shift it or release it all these years or months or however long it's been and you can't and you wonder why because it doesn't belong to you it belongs to your you know in my example is my grandfather and it belongs to my uncle and it belonged to some of the people in my life that had a really heavy relationship with god and sin and judgment and all these things and even though i wasn't christian i just took on i took that energy i was like oh i should feel really significant about that too Oh, I should feel really bad about the state of the world too. Kaplunk. And I just started filling up my backpack. But those things don't belong to me. They're not mine. They belong to someone else. And so part of it is identifying which of those don't belong to you that you can return to whence they came and be free of them to never have to deal with them again. And that's the kind of work I do privately with people, but you can also identify it for yourself just right now with that original list that you made and look at who did you get that from? Who, who's, whose reality were you trying to validate? And say, I'm giving this back. It's not mine. It's yours. You can have it back with love. I give it back with love. So that's the second way. And the third is to redefine... Oh, sorry, I promised I'd, I'd explain the twitches. The twitches come energetically when there's big energy. And I was trying to keep them under wraps for these videos, but I should have known better. So when I'm working with private clients, the twitches come when there's resistance energy or when there's something big that we need to address. It's an indicator of energy. And so those twitches are coming now because I can sense that even though it's just me and the camera, but I know you are watching this. And some of you in the future are going to have big stuff coming up about this. And so my body twitches to let me know that there's big energy on some of these topics. Okay, the third, you have to redefine your relationship with God. And what I mean by that is you have to make, uh, sorry, look at my notes, you have to make your relationship with the divine bigger and more important uh, than the delivery that you got. So for example, the Bible has um, some amazing messages about God and the divine and, and messages from Jesus. I don't, I personally don't believe that the entire Bible is the word of God. And I, I apologize for anyone who's, who's listening that it is for you. My belief does not negate your belief. You can, you can have that and I can have mine. We can disagree on that point and still respect each other and still have a great relationship with the divine. Um, but for me, the delivery of some of the lines from the Bible and especially and more so the delivery from some ministers and some family members of my past, their delivery sucked. <laughs> their delivery was so significant and full of judgment and 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 this heavy energy and so i couldn't i couldn't get the spiritual gift and truth because the delivery was so bad so part of it is redefining your relationship with the divine so you can have direct conversations with the divine with god and that you can drop the crappy or shitty delivery and just get the gold so one example is when I pray for people and, and with people, something that comes out all the time is that I uh, playfully demand. Because I realized at one point that we're all making demands of God, um, but if we do that significantly, nothing moves. But also if we're too passive in our requests of God, oh God, please, if maybe you could potentially take pity on me, your poor servant, like that sucks and doesn't move anything either. So I came up with playfully demand. God, I playfully demand that you help me and help everyone watching this to heal our relationship with you at an even deeper level. I playfully demand. And that came out of redefining my relationship with God, that, that kind of language where now I get to really take ownership of my relationship with God. I'm not deferring to someone else. It's about me and my relationship. And I want the same for you. So the story I was going to share with you, I see I've, I've gone too long in this video. Uh, I'll share that in the next video. It's a story that I call Christian Kindness. And it was part of what helped me to redefine my relationship with God and to let go of some of the religious baggage, to recontextualize some of the negative stories that I had, some of that religious baggage, and turn it into a springboard to actually have a deeper relationship with God. 
So tune in for the next video and I'll share that. And I hope you've signed up for a free call that's coming up. Uh, we'd love to see you there so that we can take this conversation even deeper and help you heal your relationship with the divine in whatever way is best for you. Have an amazing day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.